Hi. Hi, Sharon Jim. Hi, Jim. Nice Pleased to meet you. Sharon Hogan has always been a responsible homeowner, Come on in. So but she's never given much today. thought to high levels of carbon monoxide within her four-level split. Well, you know, it's funny. I haven't thought about it on a daily basis by any stretch. You periodically think about it, and you pass them in the store, and you think, oh, I should pick one up, and you just don't. But now my house is getting older. It's 17 years. You know, you think about it. With help from Public Education Officer Jim Chalensky, Sharon is learning about the importance of monitoring CO with a very simple-to-use detector. Well, basically what happens here is, is we, 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 we plug the device in, in the back here, in a 110. When the, the levels uh, get to a certain threshold, it will activate and let you know there's a problem. And it's got an audible and it's got a visual device. And it just makes a small noise. And it gives you some indication of, of where the problem is. Wow, that would wake me up. They're designed intentionally to be annoying. Annoying, but life-saving if things go wrong. There are many sources in the home that can lead to heightened levels of CO, including an old, poor-running furnace, a corroded hot water tank, auto exhaust from an attached garage, as well as a gas or wood-burning fireplace. They call it the, the, the great imitator because carbon monoxide typically uh, can make you sick and make you feel like you've got the flu. You know, headache, uh, you feel nauseous, you've got, you, know, you don't feel good, that sort of thing. Um, it is the silent killer. You don't smell it. You don't see it. It's just there. So where should one place a CO detector in the home? So typically we got our carbon monoxide detector. We want to have it around the, the area that we can hear it. And so we have a plug-in right here that's close by. We could put it there. Yeah. That's quite acceptable. One of the problems with having it here is it might get knocked off. Oh, okay. So this, this particular device is, is really good. You can actually, now if I can undo it, you can take off the plug-in part, okay. and you can move it in, in hard or screw it in so okay. it'll, it'll stay stable there. And if the device goes off, well, it's best to get out of the house immediately and call the fire department. Deaths related to heightened levels of carbon monoxide are not very common in the province, but the fact is people can get extremely sick and can potentially die if they're exposed to CO for an extended period of time. So it's best to prepare yourself and your family the best way you can. At one point in time we didn't have smoke alarms in our houses, and now everybody has one that's required. And why not with the carbon monoxide detector? You know, it's our family. It's, 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 it's our lives, you know, and, and we're worried about those kinds of things. And, you know, for $25, last five years, that's $5 a year. Mm -hmm. It's relatively inexpensive considering all the other things we spend money on. For Sharon Hogan, having such a sense of security in her home is priceless. I hope first that my house is safe and that um, I'll go out and I'll buy a CO monitor so that it continues to stay safe. Angelica Gavrensky, Shaw TV. Capital Region.